We as God's people have taken time to praise his name and to worship him. And now part of our worship is also coming to him in prayer. And today what I would like to do is to walk through four aspects from the Lord's Prayer. And I am going to, during this time, put up some slides for you to look at, but also as we look at that, what we will do is we'll take time. I'm going to put it up there. There'll be some background music and I encourage you to pray together through each of these items, either by yourself or if you're in groups of two or three, you can do it there. In the very first one, it says, God, we need your perspective first. And at a time like this, we're gonna pray and say, God, give us your perspective. Our Father in heaven. So Father in heaven, we gather before you today. And we ask in Jesus' name, Lord, you're good. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And at this time, we stop and take time to thank you for who you are. Father, second of all, we ask that we bring this perspective from heaven into our world. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, as we come here today, we declare that your kingdom is here because your people have your kingdom in their hearts. And Lord, we just ask that you bring your kingdom of peace, your kingdom of joy, your kingdom of your Holy Spirit would come and invade our world and the situations that we have, that we face. God, in your word in the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, God, we have some big needs today and some of your children today have some deep, deep needs and we lift them up to you at this time. And we look into John or Matthew chapter six where he says, look at the birds of the air, you feed them. Look at the flowers of the field, you feed, you clothe them. God, you know what we need. And, and we ask in Jesus' name, come, meet the needs of your people. Come, meet the needs, not only of your people, but there's others who need to know that you are a God who will take care of them in their needs. Father, as we declare this today, God, despite our big needs, our God is bigger than our needs. And so, Father, we declare that today in Jesus' name. I ask you to take a moment and lift your specific need, whatever it is. It may be a job, it may be finances, it may be health, whatever it is. Let's lift that to the Lord right now. Father, as we come to the end of the Lord's Prayer, it says, deliver us from evil and deliver us from the evil one. Father, Moses prayed and he prayed for a people who were sinning and you withheld your judgment because Moses prayed. Amos prayed and when the people of Israel were facing pestilence and destruction and you relented of your anger and your judgment because Amos prayed. Abraham prayed, Elijah prayed, Daniel prayed, and we pray today for this land. Lord, there have been many things that you have been displeased with. Father, we your people pray, and we ask in Jesus' name that to this 
city, to this region, to our country, to our world. Lord, bring deliverance of this COVID-19 virus. Lord, bring repentance. Lord, that people's hearts would be turned back to you. Lord, that their hearts would be turned to you for deliverance from evil. Father, we ask also that you bring honor to your name. Lord, above all, we want to see the name of Jesus lifted up because you have said that if I be lifted up, if Jesus be lifted up, he will draw all peoples, all nations to himself. And Father, today in this time, Lord, may we look to you first and foremost for deliverance. We pray that for us as individuals, us as families, us as a church, us as a city, us as a nation, but above all, us for all of the people of this world. Lord, bring deliverance, we pray. Bring repentance, we pray. Lord, above all, bring honor to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, as we finished our time of prayer, I want to just go to the next aspect, which is our time of giving. And giving is a, a really important thing. And at challenging times like today, it's challenging not only for us as a church, and, but also for the people whose needs we as a church need to meet. And, and so today I would encourage you to recognize that this is a time where God's people even though we may be separated, God is calling us and challenging us at this time to be a people who give. And there's two reasons. One is that we give because we are being obedient. In God's word, it tells us to be a giving people in any situation that we face. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and, and Luke chapter 6, we see God instructing us to be a people of obedience, even when things may be easy or when things may be difficult. But the other reason that we give in challenging times is because it's an act of faith. It's a time when we say, God, even though it's difficult, we trust your word and your word is powerful. And your word says to us today, if we give, if we are giving in challenging times, we are putting our faith in you that you will keep your promises at all times. So today, as we look at our giving needs, one of the things that we have is an opportunity for you to give online. Uh, we ask that you take a look at the WhatsApp number or you can contact Helen directly. And either of those two ways, if you wish to give online, please just contact her at those, one of those two ways. Also, if you choose to give locally, you want to give in person because giving online isn't an option for you, again, talk to Helen and she will help you to know how to do that. Let's just take our, our time right now and bow our heads and just ask for God's blessing upon our offering. Father, you are a good God. You take care of your children. You said in Matthew chapter six, you know what we need. You know that we need our covering, we need food, but you said, seek your kingdom and your righteousness first. And so Father, today I ask as your people give, Lord, as they take time right now and just sanctify this gift and declare it as holy before you. Lord, that you would take it and bless it, multiply it to meet every need that your people have. And Lord, that it would be used to touch the lives of people in our church and those who have specific needs. We release it to you and we ask that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I want to thank you again this morning for coming and gathering around the Word of God. As we come here this morning, part of our challenge today is to not only gather around God's Word, but it's the beginning of Holy Week. It's the beginning of Holy Week. And as we look at Holy Week, there's a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you. First of all, what is gathering your heart's attention? Is your heart focused on the emotional challenges? Listening to the news now, uh, the emotions that get stirred up in my heart, sometimes it's grief. I see the pictures of people wounded and hurting and, and emotionally my focus gets distracted. Sometimes it's hard to think. Sometimes it's really hard to take time and think and say, God, how do you want me to think? Our, our mental focus is wrong. Sometimes our spiritual focus needs to be changed. So today, it's the beginning of Holy Week, and we're going to prepare our hearts for Holy Week. As we do that, Holy Week reveals Jesus in three specific ways. And I challenge you today to be part of God's people as we allow Jesus to be revealed this week. He's revealed as King, Palm Sunday, the day Jesus comes and declares himself to be King. The death on the cross, Jesus is declared as our Savior. He's revealed as the one who paid the penalty for our sin. And then finally, Jesus is our Redeemer. Resurrection Sunday, we are a redeemed people. We are people set free to, to live and to walk as children of God. This is Holy Week. It's a special, special time. This week, we are going to take time and see Jesus as His Word reveals Him. Today, we are going to start with Jesus as King, revealed as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's a passage in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. It's a wonderful prophetic announcement of Jesus coming on a donkey into the city of Jerusalem, declaring himself to be king. But what I want to focus on is the fact that everything that Jesus does from this point on in Matthew chapter 20, everything that he does is now being done as a king. You'll see here there's a series of Stories that go from Matthew chapter 21 to Matthew chapter 25. Jesus cleans his house. Jesus curses a fig tree. He gives three parables. He answers three questions. He releases judgment upon the people, the religious leaders. He releases judgment upon his city because it was not ready for his coming. And finally, we see two promises. The promise that he is coming again as a king. But he's also coming to judge this world. He's coming as king again. And I encourage you this week, take time, read Matthew chapter 21 to 25. It's a powerful, powerful set of verses. I'm going to focus on one story today. It's the fig tree, where Jesus curses the fig tree. Now, I just wonder, what did this poor tree do wrong? What did he do wrong to deserve to be cursed like this by judgment? Let's read this story in Matthew chapter 21, verse 18 to 22. Matthew 21, verse 18 to 22. In the morning as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, truly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only say, do what has been done to this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, to be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive if you have faith. Let's take a moment and just pray. Father, 
We're going to look at this fig tree and you have some very special things to teach us from this today. You as king are going to speak to us and teach us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we take a look at the fig tree, and as we take a look at what Jesus had to say about this fig tree, there's a couple of things that I want to show you. First of all, it's early spring, and Jesus is looking for figs on this tree. Now, figs grow in two places on a fig tree. First of all, it grows on new branches. A new leaf is grown, and, and figs grow on the new growth. But figs also grow on old branches, old, in fact, even on the trunk itself. They will just start growing off of that. And those are the figs that Jesus is looking for right now. But the tree does not have any fruit. And Jesus curses a tree and it dies immediately. And the disciples are absolutely amazed. What caused this tree to die so easily? You see, the disciples had their focus on the physical. Jesus declared this fig tree was to die, and immediately it died. There was nothing that this fig tree would not do in obedience to the ruler of creation. And my question to you today would be, if the king of all creation said something to you, would you act in immediate obedience just like this fig tree did? That's a good question that we would have. But it's not just that Jesus is cursing this fig tree. He's using the fig tree as an object lesson. He's using this as an object lesson to his disciples and to us today. He is giving this as an object lesson because he wants us to understand we have authority to act in his name in the physical realm. Let me say that again. We have the authority of God to act in the physical realm with his authority. We can use this authority. How? Well, there's two things. First of all, we can use his authority when we implement his agenda, not our own agenda. We may think this is what God wants, but we need to be clear and understand that when we are implementing God's agenda, we have his authority. In Matthew chapter 10, we see the story of the disciples being sent out in twos, going ahead of Jesus. Jesus wants to go into the villages and he sends his disciples ahead and he calls the 12 disciples and he gave them authority. Gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal every disease and every affliction. Jesus gave his authority to his disciples to implement his agenda. But secondly, this authority has to be implemented through faith. We exercise this authority by walking in faith. Here in this passage, in verse 22, it says, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. And the authority that Jesus is saying to his disciples, this fig tree is a picture of my authority. And you have my authority. Implement my agenda, implement the kingdom agenda, and God will release his authority to you and I today. But Jesus moves from the physical to a spiritual realm. He wants them, the disciples to know this is not just a physical implementation of his authority. There's a spiritual component to this as well. Because you see, the fig tree represents the kingdom of God. It represents, sorry, the nation of Israel. See, as king Jesus is coming to his people, and he is looking for fruit among his people. God gave Abraham a calling to be a blessing to the nations, and he's looking for fruit, and there's none. So, as king, he is going to move forward. He's going to move forward without his people Israel. And Jesus is saying to us today, God had set Israel aside, as Romans 11 said, it's not complete, they will come back, but he has set them aside because of disobedience. 
Secondly, Jesus is saying in this spiritual realm, say to this mountain, be moved, picked up and moved, thrown into the sea. When we take a look at that concept that God is saying to you and I today, I give you authority in the spiritual realm to move mountains. What is he talking about? Well, Isaiah chapter 11 talks about this because it says the mountain of the Lord will be lifted up over every other mountain. And as the mountain of the Lord is lifted up, that's the kingdom of God. That's God's authority and rights. And when that is lifted up, all the other mountains have to be brought low. And in this case, he said, we have authority over those spiritual realms that try to take God's authority. And he releases that authority to you and to me and to all of God's people to be people who exercise spiritual authority in this world. Okay, for us today, I have four things that I want to say to you. First of all, don't be distracted by the news. You see, the news focuses on the physical realm of things. The news is focusing on what we can see with our eyes and feel with our hands and washing it off clean, getting ourselves free from that. And if we're not careful, that will take up our full attention. I am telling you today, don't be distracted by what is in the news today. Jesus is Lord of the physical. We have the same right as God has given through Jesus to his disciples to exercise his authority in the physical realm. When you see somebody who's sick, we pray. When you see a situation that needs God's intervention physically for health, for strength, for food, for shelter, we pray. Secondly, seek to know the king's heart in this situation. God has said, I give you my authority when you exercise my agenda, my kingdom agenda. Here's some of the verses that are there where it talks about, don't understand that God does not desire the death of the wicked. Ezekiel 33, 11. God is saying, I don't want the wicked to perish. So let's have that heart for ourselves and our world. He's looking for people who will stand in the gap against the wickedness that's in this world and saying, who is going to stand and pray and protect these people from destruction? God says that's our responsibility. Know the king's heart. He's looking for people, you and me, to stand in the gap. He's also looking to shake this people's world. Have you noticed how people's worlds are being shaken? They're out of jobs, they're out of food, they're out of resources for hospitals, there are all kinds of things. And he's asking this world, look up. Don't look down at your world, look up. God has an answer for us today. And, so, and finally, knowing the king's heart for this situation, he's in the business of kingdom transfer. In Colossians 1 verse 13, it says, People are transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We be praying today. Let us be people who pray and say, God, this is time for kingdom transfer to happen. You have shaken their world. And now we ask in Jesus' name, make kingdom transfer happen. Don't be distracted by the news. Seek to know the king's heart for this situation. Number three, be active. Be people who pray. Be God's hands for this world and the world in need. When you see a need, you take time and pray, but Lord, if you put it in our hands to meet those needs, may we be a people. May we be a church that looks to that. And finally, I challenge you. Activate the soul care training that we have had. We've had a series of training on how we have God's authority as his children. We can deal with those sin patterns in our own lives through repentance and confession. And God says, I want you not only to do it in your own lives, but to be able to help others through their challenges in this area. When they deal with the challenges of sin patterns in their homes and in their families, we know how to help them. Activate the soul care training that we've got. There's more, but we can do what we have 
been trained with. Finally, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, it says, God has put in a great house vessels of honor and of dishonor. And if a man cleanses himself, if a man takes and says, God, clean my heart out, he will make us a vessel of honor. That's activating soul care so that we can then be used by God to release blessing upon our world. Let's take a moment right now and let's ask God to give us understanding of the lesson of the fig tree. Your King, your Lord, you have authority in this world. You have authority in the spiritual realm and you release it to us today. So Father, I ask in Jesus' name. This is a picture. This poor fig tree teaches us a lesson. Give us ears to hear today. Give us ears to hear what you are saying. The authority that you have in the physical realm, it must obey just like this fig tree did. Just like the sea did when you said, peace, be still. Lord, this physical world must come in obedience to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But in the spiritual realm, we have even greater authority because you have put all things under your feet and under our feet in the spiritual realm. Father, if there's cleansing that must happen in our own lives so that we can be a vessel of honor. Lord, open our hearts that we would do immediate obedience. Father, I pray also that you would strengthen our hearts to be bold in dealing with our spiritual world, sharing with them what God has to kingdom transfer for people. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to take a moment now and close and release a blessing upon you. First of all, I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, when we talk about the power of giving to release a blessing. It says, God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you may abound in every good work. And I want to release that as a blessing upon you, God's people, as you release your resources, your time, your, your funds, and everything else that God has given. Lord, that you would release an abundant blessing upon your people. So Father, I ask in Jesus' name that as we, we your people, release blessing. Lord, you bless us as your word has promised. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.